everybody. Uh, thanks for sticking with us and uh, welcome to the Electronic Art Forum panel. We are four witness, uh, four experts from different backgrounds and perspectives are going to share the experience uh, about how they have been investigating the many ways that culture and in particular art and uh, techno culture can help navigate the complexities of rural areas and also to challenge discourses that tend to marginalize rural territories. So my name is Regine de Batty. I am a blogger, um, an art critic and a curator, and I will be moderating this panel today. First of all, I wanted to say a huge thank you to uh, Leandro and everybody who made this uh, wonderful festival uh, possible because thanks to you for three full days I have my 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 brain was full of uh, wonderful and exciting ideas and images and sounds and it, for me it was a miracle because for three days I stopped obsessing about the war in Europe Matteo Salvini and uh, global warming <laughs> so really a huge thank you because uh, thank you for this holiday you gave to my uh, rather otherwise gloomy mind but to go back to our panel, uh, I think there is a revival of interest uh, for the countryside, especially since the pandemic. And on the, you kind of have two trends. So on the one hand, there is this kind of regressive nostalgia about a kind of idyllic rurality. And this kind of vision tends to come with a very anti-modern, anti-progressive undertone. And also with a with a really, I think, powerful tendency to fight against anything that is seen as, as uh, an urban or modern contamination of, of the rural. But as I'm sure you know, rurality is more complex than a, a simple urban versus uh, rural or traditional versus innovative binary. Reality is a concept at the crossroads of geography, of history, and sociology. So apart from this, tendency I've just described, there is also a number of, of contemporary artists and many of them actually come themselves from a rural context. Mm -hmm. These artists are embracing rurality and they are attempting to give more visibility to, first of all, some of the challenges that communities are facing today, but also they are trying to explore uh, and give visibilities to alternative modes, modes of being in the world and modes of being that are possible only in the countryside. And so these, act, these, act, uh, sorry, these are artists are active in cinema and theater and literature and in contemporary art, and in particular in electronic art. So what we wanted to do with this panel, we wanted to explore some of the approaches developed by actors in countries, countries such as um, Spain, Greece, Japan, and elsewhere in the world, uh, where artists are using technologies for mostly doing two things. Uh, as critical devices of uh, territorial inquiry, but also as tools to develop uh, counter-narratives uh, related to representation. And today, uh, we also wanted to hear about this experience and look for possible connections, parallels, common vulner vulnerabilities or point of strength. And from this comparison, we would like to attempt to build a first transnational network of independent organization that share a number of ethical and, and aesthetic convictions. And uh, so this panel is going to start by Maite, because without Maite, I don't think this panel would exist uh, as it is today. So um, forgive me, Maite, but um, she's Spanish, and there are letters that uh, I, cannot pr I cannot pronounce. I'm sure you've noticed that. So Maite Cajaraville, Cajaraville, is an artist, a curator, and a cultural manager. She's working in media, video art, she's a performance, and her work has been shown literally all over the world on all continents. She's also curating to, together with electronic artist Gisle Preussland, the Pixel Festival in Norway, in Bergen. And uh, under the Pixel umbrella, uh, still with Gisle Preussland, she has developed other programs and cultural projects of national and international ambitions. And actually, I really like the Pixel uh, festivals for the way it champions electronic arts and digital freedom and, and promotes the use of free technologies. But the reason why we have Maite with us is that she's been running a workshop uh, here at Interference called Vextre, augmenting the rural reality that really builds on, uh, on a number of projects she's been working on and, and 
She's going to talk about it much better than I can. So thank you, my sweet. Thank you, thank you for the introduction. So hello. Uh, well, first of all, uh, thanks for the Interference Festival and, and for all the beautiful people that uh, we are meeting here that is uh, very much uh, uh, thinking about the rural in a different way, I would say. And well, the reason I, uh, I, I am here, or I am yeah, actually here, is uh, because I have been working since uh, 2017 in a project. I am from Extremadura in Spain. Extremadura is one of the regions, we will say, like one of the poorest regions in, in Spain. Uh, it's uh, basically rural, very rural, uh, agriculture. Um, uh, it has been a, a place where actually was not uh, very much, uh, nobody cares much about it. Uh, but now um, uh, they found uh, lithium and they found uh, some other um, economically potential structures that are uh, all of a sudden people is looking at, at the at the region, but in I think or uh, many people think they are that in a kind of bad way because it's just uh, again doing the the same that they have been doing all the time in Extremadura. It has been. Uh, like extractivism and color, uh, interior, in, interior colonialism, somehow. So I'm going to explain, to explain uh, the project a bit. This is my website, this is me, and this is my website if you want to know more in general. But then uh, talking about Bextre, uh, Bextre started in 2017. Um, well, I, a general general impression first. Bexte is a, right now it's an augmented reality. It's a 3D model that you can have on the internet. Uh, I mean, you can use and see and look at the data and everything. And this model, the the topology of this model, is made out of data. So it's not a, it's not the mountains or anything. It's a by town by town. Uh, there are many data in, including there, and this is a a way of visualizing the economical and social um, moment of Extremadura, uh, how it is. You can see there like population and depopulation. You can see economical growing uh, based in many variables, like uh, um, it's, it's a bit like how, how each city is preparing or something to be um, more updated or more innovating innovative somehow and then the 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 data can be oh, there, sorry. the data is a very a huge uh, uh, data set data set and it's all about patents uh, mm, uh, like uh, corporative uh, identities and how many companies are there how many um, uh, I mean, how many people is uh, getting ready to, to uh, start working, talking with the others, no? with, the, with the international, also in, in an international context? Um, I'm getting a bit nervous. So the, the idea of this project was to work with data, and then all, all that has been done, all this 3D model and everything, is all data. So this is a interesting thing is like how to work from the very abstract thing to something that at the end uh, became um, a sculpture. Um, also was the, what it tries to work with, I mean, is the, this idea of colonialism, internal colonialism, extractivism, uh, how um, there, are, there are like two ways, it's like how the people see us as a rural area but also how we see ourselves. And then there is also a kind of victimization from, from the people living there, uh, how we are, like uh, nobody cares about us, uh, all this kind of complaining from the rural areas. So uh, with this project, I wanted also to see like, okay, let's see what the reality is, base it in data, not base it in our own prejudice or the other people's prejudice. Then the first, uh, how the project started was a public, um, a public installation where I, I put in a, in a square uh, all these um, 
not uh, like very recogni recognizable uh, food or m like primary materials. Trying a little bit like a, it was like a metaphor of the primary material we have, no? Like uh, the, the, the our our resources, no? The, and there was the cheese, the ham, uh, wine, everything, and everything was electronically uh, connected. So if everything gives gives uh, energy, because all all the bodies have energy, if they were giving energy through this Arduino, uh, then they were um, triggering a, a printer, a big printer, uh, working with ceramics, and then they were printing Extremadura, the map of Extremadura that we, ha we have seen, that this is made by data. So it was a kind of, uh, like to show in a process, um, how, I mean, it was trying to, to, to put in the people many things, no? From one side to, to, to close, to, take away the barriers that people have uh, about art, like they show in them, like this looks like a market, so the people immediately went there because they thought that they would have some free ham or some free cheese. So when they were there and they saw that they, they were connected electronically, it was like, oh, what are you doing there? So it was, this was doing the, the, the figure, the sculpture, but also was talking about the, the process, like, uh, uh, there is a region that they, they get their grapes and they make wine in La Rioja and they sell in La Rioja as a La Rioja wine, branded there. They get the, the ham and they brand it in somewhere else. They get the oil and they brand it somewhere else. So actually, um, Extremadura is a place where um, uh, they don't get the, the things, they don't get manufactured there. So it's always extractivist. It has been uh, historically a place where the people just get the, ma the primal material, but very cheap, and, and they get the, the value somewhere else. So uh, with this process also, that was a, a little bit of a jump no? from, from food to um, a sculpture, uh, I, I also wanted to show this, uh, um, how, how the, the, if you process the data, or the, or the, I mean, the, the primal materials, then you will have something that is more valuable at the end, no? As it can be an sculpture that is an um, artwork, no? And immediately, let's say, uh, it gets more valuable, no? So, uh, it also was uh, trying to show technologies, I mean, it was trying to show a lot of things just in one public uh, installation. So this project is, uh, because of the data, it's a, it's a data set that you can uh, put, uh, the process is already done. So uh, this project is interoperable, so uh, you can just change the data set and get like a new region or a new, um, a new area, no? Uh, in this year, this was in, was in 2017, but this year, for example, we got uh, another, uh, like uh, the peop some people in the cultural center, Eugenio de Almeida from Portugal, they were asking to do the same, but from the Alentejo. So we did it for the first time. We changed this data set to another, another region, and we did Albex, that is Alentejo Bextre, no? Somehow. Um, and then this uh, somehow mm, make an um, evolution in the project like uh, we were talking at that time of the empty Spain, the España vaciada, and all of a sudden we realized that it was a, like actually it's an empty Europe because all the rural areas, it's not only happening in, in Spain, it's happening in Portugal, it's happening in here, it's happening in Germany. So this uh, was uh, an interesting approach to you know, this internationalization of the problem. It's like, and then how maybe we can get all of these rural areas that has the same problems, we can get together and maybe make a point, no? Um, also, the project is based in Creative Commons and, and software and hardware, uh, free, free software and hardware. N uh, not in all the process because some, some we had to use uh, like two programs that were not uh, so, uh, free software, but the rest is all published and um, the data can be uh, can be downloaded. Um, I mean, it's very much with that uh, in mind. No, 
that even other people can do it. So even the printer that is uh, is is also anyone can do it. That the printer is all uh, published and everything. So the data here uh, somehow what it tries to do. Uh, this is the, both projects, Bextre and Alex. What the data tries to do is like to to question, to put the uh, um, to, to make uh, try to make question to the people. No, when the people see their own town uh, and they compare with the town, the next town, for example, is like uh, why uh, why my town is more rich than the other town that is next to us that is less rich or. So it's a, like um, a visualization of the territory. So if you know how to interpret the data, that is kind of easy. Um, then actually in one glance, you understand the territory. So here we can see, for example, the which territories are losing population, which territories are uh, more growing, growing more, for example, or, or which territories um, have a m bigger gender inequalities, for example. No? So this is uh, how it is right now in Portugal, the exhibition. Uh, now we have like two sculptures, uh, Albex and Extremadura. So the, the two sculpture were uh, like that, presented like that, the, the sculpture with the website, because uh, the development of the project at the beginning we started with the sculpture because uh, it was like, the, from the data to the map, no? somehow these different, these two different uh, endpoints. Um, but then, uh, because of the 3D uh, was already done, and was a lot of work and a lot of data involved, and so I thought that it would be nice to have it uh, in our website, so the people can actually go home and they uh, relax in their home. They can uh, consult the data or, or make up bigger looking better to, to the project, no? So from, from, that, um, from that point, this is how it looks, the, the sculpture. This is the, these are the websites. You can access every that data. So from that point, the idea was like, okay, but now we have this, uh, but um, and we have uh, in the website, so why not to do it, to do it um, that the people can somehow get uh, identified with this very weird symbol, no? Like a, um, a te technological vision or identity of, of Extremadura that is never like that because uh, always Extremadura is associated with this kind of uh, values that. Uh, um, in the rural futurist uh, manifesto are very clear, no? Like uh, uh, it's always like provi uh, provincial, traditional, stable. So it's are all these um, images from Extremadura or the rural, uh, the rural areas are always very much uh, together with the uh, with this kind of values, no? So uh, what I wanted is uh, somehow uh, to to make a strange like uh, an alien object that is this Extremadura in augmented reality and give it to the people so the people uh, could, I don't know, like make some bonding or something with Extremadura but with a different different identity, no? To create, to recreate maybe or to update the identity of it. So then we started a community that is the Bextre community. For that, uh, well, I have been doing like a lot of workshops and a lot of uh, talks and trying to explain the project and bring it to uh, small cities. And so I, I try to make uh, different ways of accessing the, the project, like for example, with this uh, uh, marker. So I put it through different um, collaborations with the local associations in Extremadura. Uh, we, we managed to put these uh, stickers in many places, no? so in many, in many small cities, in small towns. So the people was uh, just looking at this, very weird, but they were doing pictures, uh, pictures for of whatever they wanted. So it was like a, 
you see the, this, they were all around. So the people started to make pictures like with Extremadura. Uh, it was normal people, very quotidian, very in their day life, whatever they wanted. So they were hang, uh, just doing whatever they wanted. So it's like uh, it's totally open, but it's uh, in a way of having this uh, you know, new creative thinking maybe, or maybe like uh, to think di different, no? to think different about the, about the Extremadura. Uh, that they also take, get us away of all this uh, victimization too, no? Like Extremadura, like something nice or something that they, um, I don't know, that can be there, no? So this is the um, estrangement uh, project that uh, we are right now with Bextre and Albex. It's like uh, all this, um, this is the idea, no? So for the community, what we are doing is I, I also have a, a, a collab, a, like five collaborators among uh, local associations, uh, uh, editorial press, uh, um, artists, and some other people that is specifically involved with the project to spread out a little bit the, the work. No? So they are sending images and we are publishing and then we have an Instagram account that is Bextre Extremadura, where the people is just uh, sending things from wherever they want. Uh, we also have a uh, Twitter, and people is also th uh, sending images, uh, whatever they want. It's like it's totally free, to uh, free, I mean open. Um, a Facebook page where we are, we are al always asking the people to, to say an inspirational sentence about whatever they they want to talk, and a, a picture with this uh, image, no? with the Extremadura. And to tag us, so we are publishing whatever they, they are sending. And we have a page trying to get all this information into one page, that is info.bextre.org. And uh, just uh, like in general, like I will say like, uh, about the rural, I think right now, because working with the community and working there more closely with the people, I think that there are now like three big challenges in Extremadura, but and I guess it's everywhere. But uh, one is this extraction thing that now they found Lipio, and it's like uh, how to, uh, it's a challenge for the people there because they don't want to have Lipio for the European thing on the other side, it's like a sacrifice land, uh, and this is clear, it's going to be a sacrificed uh, land, and the people is fighting against it, but uh, how to do it, no? how to do it with the people. Uh, the solar panels thing, that is also, uh, they are planning a lot of macro photovoltaic plants, which is okay, we need the renewable uh, energies, but the people is living there is getting nothing. Just uh, uh, they are destroying the landscape and and the agricultural areas. So I also think that this is something that we have to to think uh, about it and see how how to politically actually how to how uh, can we um, uh, participate on that on that process? No, uh, participate with the people. And the last thing is the extensive uh, farming, extensive uh, pigs, <coughs> specifically, uh, that they are they are now trying to do extensive farms there also, and this is also very polluted. So it's like the three big challenges that I think maybe with electronic art we can uh, try to participate or with citizen participation. I don't know, like uh, with all this project. Uh, this is, I think, where the challenge is uh, now in the rural, uh, at least in Extremadura. I don't know in some other places, but uh, that's it. Thank you, Michael. Are we going to listen to Yanis? Uh, Yanni? Uh, <laughs> Yanni Lolis from uh, Media Electronic in Greece. So, uh, Yanni is a video artist and a graphic designer. He's part of uh, 
Loki, which is an, Athen uh, an Athens-based creative studio that specializes in video, in motion design and stop motion animation. And Yanis is here with us because he's a member of Media Electronic, which is a, a collective of creative people uh, active in all disciplines and interested in innovation and contemporary art. Now, the interesting thing for us is that since 2009, Media Electronic uh, it organizes a residency called uh, Kumaria in uh, Celasia, which is a village 10 kilometers away from Sparta, where new media artists from around the world are invited to an olive oil farm. And once they are there, they create together uh, what they call cross art projects grounded in an improvisory philosophy. Oh, good. It's written on our the website. website. Uh, <laughs> our website, yeah. Great. Hi, um, I'm Yanni. Uh, so I, um, I represent a group called Medea Electronique. Uh, we are an art collective out of Athens. Uh, we've been uh, a collective for um, since 2006. A few of us got together and worked on a, on a project. And uh, at the end of it, we decided that we had so much fun that we should do that a regular thing and it, it kind of sparked the creation of the group. Um, we're now about 25 members uh, in the group. We're not all active members. Uh, members sort of take a break out of something that is a collective, honestly. It's necessary. Uh, but we have uh, pretty much every discipline um, uh, represented. We have um, sound artists, musicians, visual artists, animators, filmmakers. Um, we have dramaturgists, curators. Um, we have performers, uh, dancers, choreographers, set designers. Um, they're all disciplines. It doesn't mean we have one of everything, but we have someone that uh, definitely is, a, is skilled in each one of these, uh, of these categories. Uh, and we also go out all the time and we collaborate with people that we uh, admire and that we um, do not have the skills uh, in-house, obviously. Um, I'm just going to say, uh, as a uh, collective, we've done, um, uh, we've done sort of a big form installations around uh, uh, image and audio uh, and music. Uh, we've done, we've uh, sort of moved into a little bit more performative arts in the last few years of our being. We've, uh, we've put up some uh, actual live performances, which we had never done before, um, that combine a lot of what we've learned over the last few years. These are just quickly some images from them. I, I want to sort of go directly to what we're really here to talk about. Uh, we've done uh, sound walk, uh, digital sound walks and soundscapes. We've sort of worked through a process that works for us and we're, we've been able to do this in four different neighborhoods in Athens. We've done it in the village that we're going to talk about now and um, we sort of, we hold workshops and we work, we work with other uh, communities in Greece to actually implement sound, digital sound walks uh, through their uh, communities. Um, We've, uh, we've done simulated sound walks, so you've, we've taken a sound walk that you usually would experience inside a neighborhood and brought it inside a gallery space and created a, a presentation of the actual neighborhood in, inside a, a virtual space, essentially. And we also run an, uh, uh, an electronic um, music uh, noise festival for the last few years called Electric Nights. Honestly, we throw it when we can or when we want. Usually it's once every couple of years. This year, we're gonna run it twice. We ran it in <laughs> February, and we're gonna run it in September again. So we're very excited about that. But we're really here to talk about the residency, which has become the thing that really defines us as a group. Uh, <clears throat> we started the residency in 2009 um, in this small village, uh, in this house, that we were, ha we were really sort of uh, very, um, happy to have to our, at our disposal. So this house is on an olive grove in the sort of outskirts of the small village of 300 people, um, 20 minutes uh, car ride from Sparta. Um, um, it becomes about, it probably triples in population during the summer. Uh, we're never there really during the summer. We've only held the residency either in October or at the end of May in the last two residencies. Um, it's it's very simple for us. 
uh, the residency started because we needed a way to meet people that did the same things th that we did. <coughs> and we couldn't, we didn't have money to travel. So we decided to find something. Oh, here. It's okay. I get it. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, sorry. So um, we needed people to come to us, essentially. And uh, so uh, we found, this is the thing that I wanted to say a little bit about, um, we usually do before we think. Uh, so our, we've come to this, we've come to be in this place because we could then we chose to stay in it and then it's become a huge part of who we are at, as a collective um, uh, there's only one rule well, there's two rules one is before people come they have to sign uh, a um, a document that says that they're willing to collaborate uh, and that's why they're coming to this uh, residency and once they come the only rule is we all eat together at 8 p.m every night food that we've cooked in the residency, and that's where we talk about everything that we're about to do or we want to do at the residency. So it's it's 10 days of living 16 people in this house in four rooms, um, uh, two bathrooms. We're responsible for cooking and cleaning. Um, uh, we are there and working for those 10 days, those full, full 10 days. We produce output. Uh, it totally depends on the year, the output that gets produced. We do a lot of in situ um, uh, uh, works. We do, we've, we've produced films out of it. We've produced animated shorts. We've produced uh, staged shows out of it. Uh, it totally depends on the group of people that are there. Usually there's eight to 10 invited residents and six to eight, depending on the year, members from the collective that are part of this. And as I've been thinking about residencies the last couple of days as we're talking here, it's really funny because a lot of the, a lot of, of what um, what it means to have created those re relationships is with the village is that we've really essentially been running a residency for ourselves for 14 years and with invited guests because for us there's a continuity in the work that we do there and uh, new people that come in bring in uh, different they spark different reads different narratives of the same places and spaces that we continue to 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 be involved in the whole time we uh, the residency is, is based on improvisation there's a lot of that happening uh, we stage sort of after dinner uh, almost every night uh, some improv sessions with their people that are there uh, in the living room of the, of the space or outside depending on the weather on the weather there is some conversation. There's people just uh, working throughout the day um, around the house. We have done a lot of stuff. Uh, depending on the years, we've had to actually bring shows to Athens and, uh, uh, and, and have work presented there. We stopped doing that uh, a few years ago. We thought it was taking away from the residency. So what we do now is we do a show in the village at the end of the residency or around the village, uh, depending. Uh, which has uh, definitely uh, changed our our perception of time for those 10 days and the work that we end up doing and has opened up uh, different relationships with the people in the village as well. Um, these are just some examples of uh, sort of DIY instruments that have been built. Uh, we do a lot of performances in different places around the village and the greater area. Um, and I just just to I'll just jump here and I want to just show uh, the easiest way to I'll just show a couple of examples um, of work from the last years um, oh, audio do I have to choose something else hold on one second Should there be sound coming yeah, out of somewhere? Uh, from your computer, I think. Uh, no, you should go to the HDMI, but I don't know if that's projector? going anywhere. No. No? No, Oh, because I'm not linked to that. Okay. Yes. 
Oh, let's see what happens with my uh, speakers here. The idea behind the piece was to do something very simple that didn't require amplification or electronics or any kind of traditional sound materials really um, to produce kind of high quality um, acoustic sound. Yeah, I like the idea of kind of intimacy of audio, of sound. Uh, I think sound is very ephemeral. It's kind of just fluctuations in air pressure really when you look at it on a fundamental level. Um, and so this piece is quite, quite literally showing that process of air fluctuating. Uh, so I've experimented with many different materials before kind of ending up on this material, which is a biodegradable plastic sheet, which is um, a disposable item really it's mainly used for preserving artwork ironically um, so it's kind of been used in a completely different uh, I, li li I like the, the fact that it's used as an artwork in itself uh, when it's kind of designed to protect artwork and furniture when you're painting and for moving things in transport so wind is kind of uh, it's, it's, sometimes it's audible but generally it's inaudible and invisible it's this thing that has a reaction on other things, other objects and, and us. Um, and an object like this material, this plastic sheeting, enables those frequencies to be audible and to be visible. I've learned a lot about the wind as well, how quickly it can change and how brutal it can be. That was artist Joshua Le Gallien, uh, that collaborated with us in 2019. And uh, be, I, I'm just gonna show this little other piece uh, uh, from when we did the sound walk um, work at the village. Finally, after nine years of being at the village, we decided we finally had enough relationships and I don't know, uh, to actually go into the village and actually start start uh, uh, gathering narratives from the village to do work. We don't do anthropological work in a sense, well, not in a clear sense. I think we do sort of fictionalizations of, uh, of narratives and truths and realities, but definitely they're creative representations, not even interpretations, presentations of the stuff that we collect. Uh, this is uh, a blog post from 2017. It's a sound artist from Italy, Sara Marino, who was uh, um, who is speaking here and who was one of the residents that year. We walked through the village on a freezing Sunday morning. There seems to be nobody there. Either they were still sleeping or they were all gone to a monastery far away. Suddenly, we heard a voice on a loudspeaker coming from a small truck entering the room. It was the Kotoplas, the touring chicken seller. So, we met the first human being and got our first sound recording. And people then appeared. We went to one of the three cafe in Salazia and started to interview people. We listened to the story of Costa, the owner. He said that the Cafeneum was the meeting point of many political discussions for a long time, 
but now it's changed. There we met Spiridon. He was a singer. With his group, they used to sing at festivals. After their performances, they started singing again for hours, just for their pleasure. So, we asked him to sing for us. He didn't want, but then he ordered his medicine. We were all enchanted by his voice. His eyes were closed. The morning song he performed was about the wish to have youth back. Loy, a 94 years old woman, brought us back to the time of the Second World War. As she was a child, grandparents used to tell some stories in front of the house doors at the light of some candles. One of these was the story of the boogeyman, a tall creature that lived outside the village. It was told in order to preserve children from danger. Then, we went to the house of another lady, Miss Magnati. It was an old taverna she was running with her family. She showed us lots of pictures of the past years. The place where the fire was, the tables full of people. After the interview, Miss Magnati led us through a garden with a vineyard full of grapes. She opened a small green gate. There, we found Constantina, a real gift. This 93 years old lady told us the story of her school years. The teacher was very large in size, but very strict. So she was very scared. Anyway, she liked the school very much. Constantina was very good at reciting poems. She said she enjoyed it a lot. Student of Magica Palapia, after Munion, after Munion, Kinagaya, Tahavia to Yayas, who is Kiliapanda. One day, she was telling a poem during a ceremony for a dead child, and something happened. She saw grown men crying for the first time, and so she was moved. She surprised us, telling poetry by heart. The man in the second cafe he really wanted to talk a lot. He went to Sparta to high school. They used to go also to the Sunday school. One day, during a confession, he was told a secret in ancient Greek. The priest said, you know, to be a good Christian, just follow these rules. You're gonna be fine with God. And the man shared the secret formula with us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you for uh, um, 
<laughs> a great introduction. Um, nice to be here uh, with you, with all, all, with all of you. Um, yeah, today I also enjoy these three days, and also today we went to see the uh, soil experimental soil and results. I also participated in one of the day workshops of them, and also uh, listening to the the presentation was very impressive for me. And actually, I uh, I got into this world, an uh, art world. In '82, when I uh, met the Joseph Boys, and Joseph Boys told that uh, everyone, everyone is an artist, and uh, by listening to your presentations, also I felt that uh, um, by using technology or technoculture, also by using uh, uh, the people or something more discussion or conversation or collaboration, so people, uh, uh, artists. Uh, encouraging the people to communicate or also collaborate or to create together. This is uh, the, the time, for our, our time, and very important. Because as boys told that in 1970s, it, uh, looked like, it looked like a very far away, and not so many people could understand. But now, because uh, we are in the age of Anthropocene, and also we are, have been suffering in uh, very serious uh, um, environmental problems and wars and that kind of situation. Also in Japan, we have been suffering um, to many, many problems. And so this is the time that we can sit down to start to talk for the future collaboration and creations. The each of uh, each of uh, local area and each of uh, each of uh, country each country has uh, its problems, but uh, I think. The uh, sharing aspect is much more bigger than the local things. But we can also think about the localities like today, because uh, this is very important, like bottom up, and uh, not so much influenced by the modernization. And it was a pressure for the local area for many years. But now it became a potential, I think. And today, uh, I, I, this is my website. Uh, I cannot uh, show you uh, so beautiful things like uh, to uh, present a short just ma just before me. Uh, this is my website, but my top page is the water. <laughs> I've been researching water more than ten years. Yeah, especially after uh, we had the serious earthquake, East Japan earthquake and tsunami, and the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant accident. So this is something very uh, uh, big for us. Of course, in Japan, we have so many uh, serious uh, um, historical moments, like uh, the modernization in the 1860s uh, from uh, Japanese culture to uh, accept the modernization. Also, we had the World War II, and also we had to have this history of, how to say, uh, colonial, colonializing in the other surrounding countries. So we, it was uh, time for me to rethink about Japan and geology and the history of culture, how Japan people came out, because we, all of us, are uh, actually not uh, originally from Japanese islands, but uh, came out from Pacific or like a continent or northern part or uh, Southeast Asia. So somehow we are, in a way, stoked like a pool <laughs> or something. No way to go other place. This is the uh, Japanese uh, situation uh, historically. So i am been thinking about uh, what is Japan and what we can do from in, in such a uh, serious situations. So open, this is uh, uh, the water, and I've been researching and curating uh, with the notion of information flows. So it was especially in, in art, uh, from the beginning of 1990s, it was a media art. It was a very experimental time, like we share the same uh, people, uh, as a friends, but uh, also I'd be interested in uh, information flow and like water or people like uh, like uh, uh, like movements, um, immigrants or also refugees or that kind of thing. Also, uh, not only uh, um, human water flow but also some other flows or information or airs also. So here this time, uh, Soichiro Mihara is here. He's been also working with uh, sound, but especially with frequencies. 
and also he is very interested in air, so he has installation of uh, uh, air this time here. Also he had a performance uh, yesterday on uh, air, uh, titled Air and in air, of t air of Today in Italian. So um, this kind of um, how to say, interest can be is shared with Leandro and I am Murakami, I think. So this is one um, point for, uh, for me to say. And today I saw the uh, soil experiment result, and I really thought uh, um, in history, by especially by modernization, uh, and the people or human being uh, covered many things or um, putting the borders, or cutting many things. So not nature flows beyond country or beyond any place like water or air. But uh, now in rural area, we have more possibilities uh, because uh, not so many things was covered <laughs> and uh, uh, territorialized than, than city or urban areas. So we see some possibility. I thought that when I saw so many uh, stones came out from this area. Um, you mean just uh, well, I'm talking about uh, um, Andrea and uh, Andrea and sorry Rafaela and Alexander workshop. They dig out so many stones and also some plastic or some other thing or also uh, uh, how to say my, my, anyway this kind of thing. This is something, but all waiting for them to be digged out maybe because it was open, it was not covered by asphalt, I thought. So uh, today I want to focus on uh, energy in rural. Uh, it was hosted by Eminaria and ACAC in located in Aomori city. In frame, this is a, 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 a artisan residence, an artisan residence center uh, under the umbrella of Aomori Prefectural University and it's in the mountains. Uh, Aomori is the capital city of A Aomori Prefecture. You, you can see the map. And there is a, a big, the biggest island named the main island and uh, the located the, the very uh, the north, top north. And this is Aomori. And uh, just north, north uh, uh, there is one island uh, north uh, from Aomori is Hokkaido. So it's very close. They have many uh, power plants like uh, there are many plants in peripheral area in Japan, like Fukushima or Fukui or Aomori or some other places. Aomori is one of them. And of course, this, uh, 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 you know, how to say, environmental and, uh, changes or if anything happens, uh, it's uh, also influence the surrounding area beyond the, beyond the prefecture, beyond countries and also water flows and water go around the, the globe. Yeah, maybe I can explain much more than, <laughs> better, better than me, because I'm not from ACAC, I'm an I'm independent curator. Uh, but uh, just for uh, your information, this is uh, the center in, in the mountain. You have a caution of bears, <laughs> so <laughs> this is uh, the thing. Um, but it's a very beautiful area in a forest. And there is an uh, entrance uh, uh, of the tunnel. And uh, before going to uh, reach into the uh, building, was also beautiful. And uh, the space is very big. And the artists, uh, there are two uh, artists in residency a program. I can just read, <laughs> maybe uh, I can read on. The Omori Contemporary Art Center is surrounded by the rich wood. It opened in December 2001, aiming at the place of new creation where nature and art li live together. At this institution, twice a year, at spring and autumn, we have an artist in residence, uh, which we call in Japan air, in short, uh, an art artist in, in residence program system that invite artists to reside, reside in Aomori and produce works. We aim at offering the opportunity of various appreciation of art, the exchange activities with artists and citizens, and making the original art culture of Aomori City. And in the Autumn Air program, we invite artists who play active part in the contemporary art field from all applicants. We support the uh, residents' work and holding the exhibition. 
At the same time, we set up the workshops and lectures by artists for audience to play a part of, to help to understand art deeply and promote international exchange through art. Invitation artists can receive the following support. Accommodation studio, shared space is provided artists for creative activities. The creative activities and mu mutual exchange will be approved through to and productive experience for the artists and for the local players, I think. But uh, there is no uh, residential area uh, nearby, so this, uh, this place is a bit isolated. So uh, the staff and the mediator curator uh, try to work more and uh, to make the make reaching to the um, local residents, I think. So, but they are running over 20 years, and it's one of the very, uh, how to say, mm, a prestigious uh, artist in residence in public. And this is uh, the, um, the energy in rural. Maybe you can have a check at the website. And uh, this is uh, in Japanese, sorry. Um, the Soichiro Mihai is uh, on under half, um, under half. And uh, Nicola di Croce is uh, uh, from Italy to visit and to uh, have a residency next year. Also, Leandro will come to other curator in residence for next year. So we started uh, last year as a virtual residency and communication. Then second year, uh, up, um, finally, uh, yeah, um, because we had a COVID situation, uh, finally uh, Japanese, from Japan, Soichiro and I came. And I, we are so happy about that. And uh, next year, uh, uh, from Italy to Japan. And Italy, Maybe you might have uh, heard about, about our, um, how to say, um, schedule. Uh, so it will arrive on um, July 5th, and he will stay uh, over one month. And uh, both of us, uh, I arrived 15th July, and uh, actually we both uh, go to four, four sites. And so she stayed uh, at the first, uh, first site 10 days, and I stayed one, uh, at first time uh, only one night. But uh, we enjoy being here, and very, uh, very impressive, because uh, South Italy is uh, just very interesting nature, also history, and also people, food. So everything is very fascinating. And each uh, location that we reside is different. So we can feel the dif difference. And also we are keen uh, about uh, thinking about energy, researching about energy. So energy of uh, uh, our people, energy from the ground, food, or earthquake, or, or water. Uh, there was an accident of water here in this uh, town. So, so this is something very much in our interest. And uh, it, we can get any, many things uh, from this research during this stay. Especially COVID uh, situation, we couldn't travel uh, easily. So after two and a half years, we are very happy to be here taking a very long trip to Europe. And yeah, this is from the ACAC AC, AC site. So this is the first uh, residency of uh, Soichiro at Polinaria. So he participated in harvest um, wheats, and he also did uh, making uh, a participant to making a tomato sauce or that kind of thing. So many many activities. He made his schedule totally open to <laughs> so take part in anything in each area. It was so nice, and we are here doing this also here. The other thing, and uh, the other uh, place, I'm. Uh, uh, I get involved with uh, in at the center of uh, Honshu main island in Nagano prefecture. You can see this is uh, just uh, in the middle of uh, Pacific uh, Pacific and the Japan Sea. Like uh, Akironia looks like a very uh, similar in the middle located in the middle of uh, uh, Adrian and uh, other sea. Here, uh, yeah, we, and the founder is uh, Keijiro and Nino. 
He's an used to be an analyst and also making a public based common public or common based activities like uh, finding the like abandoned building or not used building to renovate to make a creative office or exhibition space. Then he and I had a discussion on how to uh, how to how to update the notion of Joseph boys in, in in the COVID situation. Then he had the idea, and we had a discussion, and we made a forum uh, at the, this place. This is uh, the place, the forest for um, dialogue and creativity, located in Suwa. Uh, it's uh, in Suwa, a Chino city in Nagano Prefecture. And then this is an eight meter long titan made mirror reflecting an uh, ever changing nature. This was his, his uh, idea, and he uh, realized this after having this uh, first idea uh, over 10 years ago. Over 10 years. So, uh, I also explain uh, about, roughly about this place. Uh, this is uh, Art, Art Commons, a kind of initiative. So, we try to make the new, uh, new uh, way of art, somehow, not beyond the art market, the existing. Uh, um, a capitalistic system. So, like you're supposed to add as a, as a capital, Kunst is a capital. It's not a uh, monetary uh, based capitalism, but we can try to make the different way of uh, creativity and cultural update and uh, up, uh, up, so cultural update and also to make uh, uh, some uh, money by that. So, Art Commons Forest for Dialogue and Creativity is located in Suwa, Yasuradaki area. In the central part of Jap Japan's mainland, where the median tectonic line that ran from east to west meets the Itoigawa Shizuoka tectonic line, there are very big, techno very uh, big techno tectonic line uh, between east and west and north and south. Cross this point. This is very special uh, place, the geological site that ran from the north to south. The westernmost line of Hosa Magna. Hosa Magna was found by um, Dr. Nauman in the um, 19th century, connecting the Sea of Japan side to the Pacific Ocean side. This area has created a nurture its own animistic spiritual wisdom and culture. It's a very I interesting place, and they have very special uh, animism until today, including the mid German period culture like 15,000 to 5,000 years ago, that prospered for 10,000 years. And it's still part, because at that time, 10,000 years ago, the most uh, populated, the most populated place was here, Nagano, not in Tokyo. It's amazing. There were good, good water flow and also uh, good uh, tree or also vegetable or that kind of thing or nuts. And for them to survive. And it uh, still part is uh, healthy today. Historically, the land of forest and dialogue creativity at the foot of Mount Yatsugadake has not been owned by anyone until now, but co managed by local people as Iriaichi. Iriaichi is a, a kind of commons in Japanese. Yeah, we have the small uh, house, renovated house. We call it the uh, um, Forest Laboratory, and uh, we started artist in residency this year. So we will not uh, uh, accept many artists, only one or two per year. Also, every month we have a talk event, uh, invi inviting artists, uh, artists can talk, and also in, in a very um, intimate uh, situation. No online streaming, only less than 20 people, and after that, we have a very uh, casual conversation because the uh, Art Common member or some uh, guests are very much uh, well, from different kind of field. So there are many interesting questions, <laughs> like uh, art people, um, not uh, like for art people, but we have so many fruitful discussion. Then we have a kind of barbecue every time. So enjoying time and nature with artists. So I think this art, will uh, also making a driving force for the rural uh, encouragement uh, ac uh, activities. And we respect the local people. We learn uh, from local people. We 
have many uh, discussions. Also, we ask many questions to the local people. There are many local research of archaeology or religion or that kind of thing. So uh, we have a good communication. For this uh, place, actually, we don't have uh, uh, so much techno culture yet. But uh, I hope, uh, I, can, I, I think we can try, uh, st uh, we can accept, uh, we can uh, promote this kind of techno culture together with you. Thank you. I'm going to follow Alessandro Lodovico's biography on Wikipedia. And Wikipedia tells me Alessandro Lodovico is a researcher, an artist, and the chief editor of Neural Magazine since 1993. So Neural is almost 30 years. But wow. wow. Uh, he has a PhD degree in English and media, and he's associate professor at the Winchester School of Art, University of Southampton. Uh, Alessandro Lodovico has published and edited several books and has lectured worldwide, and is also one of the authors of the award-winning artistic trilogy, uh, Google Read Itself, Amazon Noir, Face to Facebook. And this is not in Wikipedia, but the reason why we wanted to have Alessandro with us today is that, you know, you can take pretty much any kind of topic that is more or less related to art and technology, and you throw it at Alessandro, and we, he will come back with a, with a feedback that is always sharp, witty, and, and surprising. So, no pressure here. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not that much. Actually, there's a lot. But anyway, um, yeah, thank you very much, Regine, for the uh, extremely kind introduction. Uh, thanks for inviting me here. And I mean, it, it, it's quite late. I'm not going to uh, talk for too long. Just to give you, I mean, a couple of ideas. Uh, uh, about this whole system. Before that, let me just uh, let you see the, the magazine. This is not even announced. That it's the last issue. And it's one of, uh, I mean, it, it's issue 70, as you said. Next year, if all goes well, we will celebrate three decades of publishing. But um, we, we don't, uh, of course, run uh, any kind of residencies. We have internships uh, from time to time. No, it, it's fine, it's fine. It's my, it's my fault about the, um, um, the projection. Um, but um, my, uh, I mean, o over the years uh, we have covered uh, New Orleans Magazine about critical media art. And over the years we have covered, uh, of course, quite a, 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 a huge amount of topics. Uh, and uh, I think that what we are talking about today is mostly uh, something connected uh, with uh, science, uh, and art and technology, as many of the previous speakers uh, uh, have already proven. But I would like to just point out uh, a couple of characteristics uh, which I think are important in this ecosystem of art, science and technology, especially applied to rural areas. I personally come from a small town, uh, not too far from here, like um, three hours, four hours uh, driving from here, so I do know what it is uh, to uh, live in such a space. And what I think that these spaces have as a special characteristics that allows the, develop, the, develop, the development of concepts and especially art, but especially ideas, is that there's a different time and space compared to urban areas. And the different time and space is somehow dictated by the smaller environment somehow, and I think it's uh, facilitated uh, as well by the social community, which are smaller and usually more engaged. Uh, as all, I mean, in the previous talks, uh, in the previous panel, most of the residencies, uh, uh, projects I've heard, were especially about the relationship with the artist. I think that this different time and space uh, is especially, uh, I mean, this different time and space is especially important when we talk about the relationship between art and society. And especially when it, sorry to reiterate that, especially when it comes from a critical perspective. And why that? Because 
with this uh, slower time and with this uh, bigger space, I mean, it, 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 it might sound a little bit uh, uh, pretentious to say it's a bigger space, but actually it is. I mean, here we have much more space than probably we would have uh, in an urban environment uh, to meet uh, and to establish uh, communication and relationship. These communication and relationships are easier than in uh, what usually happens in urban areas. I might argue that it, it's because uh, there's uh, more time, there's more space, but it's because uh, there's more time for developing communication and there's more proximity among the bodies that are involved. And especially in the residencies uh, and especially in uh, uh, these focus art projects, uh, uh, the proximity I think is quite important. I would, uh, I would only argue about one uh, a further concept, which I think it's related to most of the projects uh, um, uh, that have been presented, which is uh, one specific um, technological infrastructure that I think we have under, very underexploited till now, despite the fact that we have quite powerful small computers in our pockets all the time. And this technological infrastructure is, of course, the network. But, I mean, this is not by default the network. This is, this is of course, I mean, all the technologies that we use are using extensively the network infrastructure, but it's a technical network infrastructure, and uh, most of the use that we do about it it's dictated by the industry. Uh, I would like to just remind, uh, I, I mean, I was there, of course, you can guess it, that in the very beginning of the public internet or commercial internet, as it was, uh, um, as it was uh, defined in the early 90s, uh, there was this uh, utopia about the internet and utopia about the web. What kind of utopia was that? Was the utopia to finally establish a critical, free, and horizontal communication among people? Why am I mentioning this in relation with the uh, rural areas, and especially about the possible critical and constructive interventions made by artists? Because I still do think that, these, that the technological networks can be a crucial part in connecting different spaces and times. And uh, if we talk about uh, making an international network, I mean, more than, uh, I mean, an international network, it's always a very nice thing if, if it works, but mainly about connecting places uh, when th there are artist intervention in rural spaces, so in sm connecting small places uh, around a few countries or around the world, it doesn't matter uh, from my personal uh, perspective, then we can constructively use these kind of networks in order to strengthen the collaborations and the changing this time and space from the local one, which is its own time and space, again, as many of the residency projects have underlined. Here we have a specific time and space, as probably in the rural areas in Japan we have a different one, as we have different one probably in, uh, um, in Greece and in Spain. But uh, we can have this uh, specific situated time and spaces which can at time occasionally, when it's needed, be, correct, be connected in the same time and in the same space, coordinating locally the possible artist intervention. And I think this is one of the, again, un not yet exploited, not yet truly used possibilities of this huge infrastructure made uh, mainly by networks and software that we still have. So I just wanted to point out these two main concepts and leave it here. Thank you very much. I would like to put through the statement that... Uh, uh, sure. Yeah, this, this, this morning we 
started, you know, this brainstorming about this possible network of um, organization realities. Well, it's it's a uh, realities. Well, we can. You can try figure. Um, we we were thinking of yeah we we're here to talk and have a panel and how how about trying to be more proactive and starting to really kick off like use the the um, use the festival to really kick off the reflection and and start thinking about a statement about what we would like to do so while we are trying to uh, to screen this statement uh, yeah. So I'll let you read, and I'll start the conversation with, uh, with everyone. Um, of course, if you want to interrupt, if you have questions, just raise your, raise your hand, because otherwise I, I, I want you to, to ask questions as well. So one question I have for you. Um, very often when we think about, about the rural, it's always thinking about the difficulty, how uh, it's, it has problem with, with, with very dry weather and how it's de there's p depopulation, how people are disconnected from services mm -hmm. and infrastructures. But uh, I'm wondering, as, um, as people who are directly interested in the countryside, what can you do in the countryside that you would not be able to do in urban area? Make me dream. <laughs> <laughs> talking to people that are intervening in the space <laughs> they're not um, living in the space but I think um, uh, to use uh, but uh, it's to because use you don't, you don't live there. Uh, uh, tourism um, a, a slogan that says we, ha we have for a long time you said you can live your myth in Greece you can live your myth in the rural area I think because you can make it for yourself I think I was telling you the example earlier today of friends of mine. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Not to me. <laughs> um, there's, a, there's plenty of examples. There's examples of people that have been able to leave urban space, go to rural spaces. I was giving an example of friends of mine that left 10 years ago Athens. They went uh, into the mountains of uh, Patra, and they sort of created, uh, um, you know, their own little utopia, essentially, with permaculture. Uh, they brought people that were like-minded, that came to volu to volunteer to work with them, but then bought uh, their own uh, land that created an actual real community that is actually now more than the people that are living that were living in that space before. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think there's no. We were talking earlier today because we're saying part of what we're trying to do is uh, what, what your project does essentially is highlight um, the difficulties and the challenges of rural spaces. But there's definitely the possibility, the potential of the positive, right? So I don't know. That's part of what our projects have been about. But listening to what Alessandra is saying is really, that's not really, the c content is not the, the um, the bigger issue right now, the connection, I think, is the thing that we could focus on and I think that could bring about different results in, in, in the work that's being done on a, on a singular base, but uh, uh, make it actually have an effect in a much more significant way. So I've been told we have only 10 minutes. Uh, if someone has, has a question, no. Uh, yeah, I have I have other questions, so I have I have to select one. Um, yeah, I would I would like to ask you, what do you see your role as curator, thinker, artist, uh, part of organization in rural area? Do you see yourself? As, I'm going to be a bit provocative. Like, do you see yourself as being an ent entertainer, a facilitator, being um, networker? Uh, do you think you can have a political role where you can? you know, move something, maybe bring attention to, to problems or alternative modes of being in the world in rural area. What, yeah, what role can you play? Yes. Uh, for example, I see myself in, 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 in different aspects, but one, for example, can be 
somehow like to look a little bit from outside, you know, there is, uh, sometimes uh, if you are there, you, you are not able to see uh, like the bigger picture, for example. So uh, this is uh, like looking from outside, but uh, having a, a very, very close feelings, for uh, strong feelings for, for what is going on there. And also like a connector, for example. Mm -hmm. And I think this, uh, this is uh, very nice, like uh, today talking, like we don't live actually in, in these rural areas where we are working out, uh, we are working about, no? So it, it looks like a, a little bit pretentious. But on the other side, maybe that's why we can maybe get some other connections that if we will be there, we will not be able to, to, to get, no? So this, uh, this, this role of also as a connector with, with other rural areas, maybe this is what we can do, no? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, uh, for example, my uh, uh, engagement to, to the, uh, the, the second part, the uh, voice for um, creativity and uh, dialogue, dialogue and creativity. Uh, most of people uh, doesn't live in uh, the, the area, but uh, there are some uh, um, members based in this area. So we have a meeting and also each of us has a, each role. And there are many diverse, many kind of people, diverse people, so we can communicate. And each of them can take a role, but also we can collaborate and they, we can also exchange the, the role sometimes. This is one of the, one way. Also, uh, as Alessandro uh, told, that uh, we can also utilize the potential of uh, like getting connected. Uh, so, and there are local uh, reality and local situations, but also we want to use uh, the internet as a, uh, like a to say, broadcasting media or communicating media. We call it mountain media, <laughs> mountain media. And uh, the founder of Keiji Nino used to be, a, uh, was a friend of uh, the founder of uh, uh, <laughs> SoundCloud uh, when he was uh, in Europe. So uh, we, uh, and then, the, the founder of Eric, the founder of SoundCloud, told him that, oh, it's a mountain media you are going, going to do. This is uh, our maybe tema to make a mountain media, <laughs> the me media from mountain to how to say stream many things and uh, to connect global realities. This is uh, our strategy to be in local, but also at the same time using mountain media. <laughs> Very shortly, yeah, I don't need the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Very shortly, um, I think that we all come from critical backgrounds, and it's quite clear. And that's why it's uh, really a political gesture then to, to be in this area, I think. And what we can do is to be uh, physical nodes of networks, connecting other physical spaces. Yeah. And this uh, uh, movement of active and critical bodies in these physical spaces can make a difference. I always see myself personally as, an, as a human node in a vast network. And I think this is an approach that uh, uh, can give sense in a way mm. to have uh, different spaces that connect and then can produce uh, local outcomes uh, but also having this international and interconnected uh, uh, like now, exchange now. and background yeah. to exchange yes hey, but the difference I think is w w building on what he had said earlier I think the difference in the space and the time is what makes the because you could say you could be human nodes inside cities and urban spaces and all that but I think uh, the rural characteristics uh, give an opportunity for this to have a bigger impact, essentially, mm. in, in, um, in, in a more obvious way, I feel, right. because of the way that the rural space works. Okay. Uh, we are going to, clo to close on these wise, wise words. So thank you so much for <laughs> staying with <laughs> us and the mosquitoes. Thank you so much for staying with us.